Great, thanks everyone. Um, basically today, um, I'm just going to be talking to you about the IPNR model. And I'm bearing in mind that a lot of you will actually be quite familiar with this model. So I won't probably pay a lot of attention to that, but I think that the most meaningful thing that you can get out of today's session is to think about from an ageing population planning strategy point of view, how you can use the model to your best advantage, because I think that's probably what you're all here for. Um, and also to think about if you are applying for grants in the future, how you can actually use the integrated planning model to give you a bit of leverage, hopefully. Um, I really like this quote, um, thank you. LGSA. <laughs> um, an ageing population is everyone's business. And it's interesting because, you know, here I am, I've, I've, I'm now working for the DLG, I've come from a community services background, but I'm loving the fact that we're all having the same conversation, which is brilliant, which is actually about you don't necessarily engage the people who are already at that point in their life where the ageing population issues is critical. You actually need to start to talk to people start to talk to people um, at, at various life stages to make sure that they're going to be healthy and independent for as long as possible. And it's also a conversation internally with your colleagues. And I really want to stress this because, again, I come from a, a corporate services background where I've tried to then have to go out and help engage other people in the organisation around community strategic planning issues. And it's not that easy. Um, community development are brilliant. One of them is actually here today, <laughs> so I have to say that. But y you have people that have a particular interest in the subject and they're going to be so much more easily engaged in the process. And, and, and Peter and, and people have touched on this previously, but just keep this in mind as we go through the presentation. I want you to ask your council a couple of questions. Um, how are they actually planning for an age-friendly community? Is that actually a conversation they have at the community strategic planning level or is it a separate conversation? Who manages that conversation? Is it a holistic approach to planning or is it actually again about the community development workers driving that process because that's great, but everyone has to be part of that conversation. Do you actually really know what the community wants? And really importantly, are all of the programs that you want to run reflected in your corporate planning documents? And this is actually going to be quite vital, and I'll talk to you in a moment about why that is, particularly in terms of getting money. Um, how do we resource our activities? Again, um, all of the, the councils in New South Wales are actually required to produce a resourcing strategy. And when we talk about a resourcing strategy, we're actually talking about the right people, the assets and the money in place to actually get the job done. And if it's not a sustainable program, look at the options that are available to you. If you, if you adopt this approach, and, and be proactive, you're actually minimising a lot of risk in terms of your project delivery. So this is the model and a lot of you will have seen it before, you will have seen it a billion times, I hate to bore you with it. Um, but how, how it works for those of you who aren't familiar with it is that you have a community strategic plan. Now that plan is, it's a minimum of 10 years, it's basically the big picture stuff. It's all about community outcomes, where they see themselves in 10 years, how they want to get there, what their priorities are. You'll then have a, a four-year delivery program. Now that is actually a corporate document, as is the operational plan. It basically says over the next four years or the term of council, what do we want to do? What activities we actually put in place to achieve some of the outcomes that are articulated at the community strategic plan level? The operational plan, a lot of you will actually find that your work plans will link quite closely to your operational plan in an ideal situation. And quite importantly, um, at the end of the day, a lot of this is driven through community consultation. I want to point you to the 
DLG website. If you haven't had a look at this, please do, because what it's actually doing is it's giving you an option to look at integrated planning in the, in the context of ageing populations. So if you go to the website, you have a drop down list there, you go to integrated planning and there is actually quite a, a dedicated site about ageing populations. And it will actually take you through a process which I won't go through now because that will take up too much time and I think I have 15 minutes. So. But if you have a look at it, it's quite um, intuitive. It's a five-step process. It's actually about thinking about all of the programs that you are responsible for and how they integrate across the rest of the organisation. I encourage you to take a look because it might actually be a practical tool that you can apply. And it's a really good time to have this conversation because a lot of you will actually be going through a process right now where you're reviewing your community strategic plans. Now, again, coming from a council background, I know that it varies from council to council, so you might actually have uh, community services people that, that drive this process. Uh, where I came from, it was the strategic land use planners that, that drove this process. Um, other people might have corporate services. Um, and some of the smaller councils, because I'm actually um, involved in the review, if anyone here is like a group three council, and you'll understand that if you, if you are one. Um, I'm actually part of the review of those group three councils. And one of the things that's been actually quite great is that because a lot of them have not as many resources available, they're not flying in the big consultants to write their plans. Um, They've actually got like a, like a unit that is cross-divisional and they're having this conversation across all of council and you guys actually flagged this before about having the conversation across all of council, not just about community services because it's really, really vital. And uh, yeah, depending on which council you come from, you might find that you have a cross-divisional cross team that manages this process or you, it may be the carriage of somebody else. But I really encourage you at this point in time, because a lot of you will have to review them, put your hand up and just make sure that they are engaging with you around the ageing population issues. So if we were to take a look at the DLG website. Um, there are a couple of examples that we give you, and this is a, just like a really crude copy that I've done. Um, it's actually not um, representative of all of the strategies that they go through. But what, I'm, what I would ask you to do is go onto the website and have a look at examples of, and bearing in mind you have community strategic plans for your own individual councils look at that strategic plan and see where the ageing population strategies fit. Because it's not just about social, it's about economic, it's about environmental activity, it is about civic leadership. All of the, the strategies that you have in mind at the moment may actually fit somewhere where you don't think off the top of mind that they fit within a community strategic plan. But I'll guarantee that there's an opportunity I'll give you an example. There was a gentleman before that was talking about um, economic activity. If you, if you think that perhaps, perhaps you actually have, and this is quite a broad comment, but and generally speaking, a community strategic plan is so high level that a lot of their, it's very conceptual, it's like a high level, broader comment. But have, have a look here under economic, a sustainable and, vi and viable economy. Now, if you have a separate social plan or a separate ageing strategy, how can you support that outcome? You know what, you probably can and you haven't even thought that you can and other people in your organisation probably don't even realise that you can support that outcome. And again, I, I just encourage you to take a look at the website because that will give you a better indication of how it works. But it is all about taking all of your ageing population um, strategies, for example, or your social plan strategies and feeding it into the organisation. Make sure the organisation sees that you have strategies that will benefit the rest of the organisation. Just going back to uh, community engagement for one moment, and this has been touched on 
previously and some fantastic examples, particularly from pit water and the likes. But I wanted to say to you that one of the things that I have found quite interesting looking at a lot of the Group 3 councils that we've been reviewing is that they are doing amazing stuff around community engagement. It's not about the resources that are, inva are actually available to you. Some of them have to be quite creative because they don't have the money, uh, they don't have the people on the ground. They're doing some fantastic things and that's a whole other conversation, that's a whole other session. I'll give you my details at the end, but if anybody wants to talk about community engagement for ageing populations, please give me a call because I've seen some really great best practice examples that I just go, wow, that's fantastic. So again, I'll, I'll give you my details at the end, but just um, bear that in mind. One of the things that's really important, and again, this has been flagged, but it's not just about having a conversation with the community, it's actually about having a conversation with the engineers, with the IT staff, with the strategic planners. If you miss that conversation, you have no value. And the reason why I say that is because, again, when you get back to looking at the overall picture and also having those really integral internal conversations about who gets the money, and we've all been there, <laughs> you, you, might get, you might miss out. Like, you know, you have to be a bit more proactive. Um, you have to put your hand up. I know it's a really difficult thing to do, but it's actually about getting the engineers talking the same talk that you talk the IT people talking the same talk that you talk, you will find that so valuable if you can, if you actually have the opportunity to have that conversation. Um, and, and I can use the example of assets because we talked about the resourcing strategy and integrated planning process. Everyone has a resourcing strategy, you have an assets component of that. Can I ask what is an acceptable level of service? What is it? And it was it was touched on. Um, but basically, you actually have engineers that go out there and they do the work and they, they will actually give all of these assets a condition rating, as I won't go back down that track, but they apply their technical expertise to assets. And when I talk about assets, I'm talking about playgrounds, bridges, footpaths, everything. And there are certain things that they look for from a technical point of view and they have quite specific criteria and they will give it the condition rating and it will be excellent or it will be really, really poor. The question is, again, and, and it's great that we actually are linking our presentations <laughs> on this subject, is that is it fit for purpose? What does the community think that asset is worth? Is it providing what they want it to provide? If you were to look at this, this look at the dirt road, for example, is that an acceptable level of service? Is that a priority issue just because it's a dirt road? The issue might be, well, you know what? What if I was to tell you that no one drives down that road? Or if I was to tell you that that road is one of three alternate routes to the property. If the community is actually telling you that it's safe, it's reliable, that it's, um, it's fit for purpose, does that mean that you would necessarily look at that and go, there is a priority for funding? Possibly not. Um, Go back and go back to the grants because that's actually what you really want to talk about, <laughs> really. Um, but I, I suppose what I was coming down to in that last slide was that really, and Catherine did talk about this quite a bit, is that the levels of service aren't determined necessarily by your engineers, okay? They're actually, the levels of service are actually um, determined through community consultation and it's so key that you have that communication and a lot of the things that they will consider during that will be things like quality, quantity, safety, capacity, reliability, fitness for purpose as I've already said. Um, 
ask yourselves internally, the people that actually go out to the community and talk about your assets, the people that rate your assets um, potentially, the people that take the conversation out to the community, do they have a conversation with them about ageing populations and do they give it a context? It's just like, you know, throw it out there. What are the things that are considered when they actually go out there? Or are you, as community development workers, actually part of that conversation? And would you like to be, perhaps? Good planning, and again, this was flagged previously, doesn't necessarily support just people who are aged um, or ageing or have to consider those implications. It may actually be that if you are considering those implications now, you're actually catering to a much broader community. For example, the children, the mums with prams, the, the people who have a disability. Have those conversations early in the process and as early as you can because it would actually add a lot of value. So, um, yeah, getting to the grants. Um, Michael and, and James are actually going to talk to you about the grants um, that are available, um, the Age Friendly Community Grants specifically, a bit later. But one of the things that I would like to draw your attention to is that you will actually have two um, potential categories, I guess, that you might be able to fall into, and, and James will correct me if I'm wrong. But it doesn't matter where you're at in the integrated planning and reporting cycle. The issue is you should have an opportunity to apply for a grant. It may be that you don't actually know what the project is that you need to deliver, but you need to know, but you know that you have to go and have a conversation with the community to, to, act, to actually identify that project. So you have two options and, and, and don't feel that you're cut out of that process depending on where you're at in the planning cycle. And that was probably the one thing that I actually just wanted to emphasise and, and Michael and James will actually go through that with you a bit later. Um, that's basically repeating what I just said, but it's, um, again, it's just basically if you completed planning for population ageing, um, it may focus on implementation. Um, and if the council has not previously undertaken age-related planning or the council has come to the end of its current planning cycle, it may undertake planning and implementation. If the council has not previously undertaken planning for population ageing or the council has come to the end of its current planning cycle, part of the project can be to undertake these activities. And this may involve developing a separate ageing strategy or incorporate, incorporating ageing objectives <laughs> into the community strategic plan or relevant regional plan. One of the reasons why I want to highlight that too is because just bearing in mind, I don't know if, if any of you are involved in conversations with IPART when it comes to special rate variations, but you will find more and more that they will ask you to refer back to your integrated planning and reporting documents. And the guidelines I think are going to be released shortly, but Basically what we're getting down to is that more and more if you are looking for grants, um, if you're looking for special rate variations, they will actually look at your integrated planning model and they will look at the robustness of the, at, of the, the documents you actually got in hand. So I won't, um, I think I've actually run out of time. So, but that, those were the questions that I asked initially. Um, my tips would be, please don't be afraid to be part of the integrated planning conversation at your local council, put your hand up, be proactive, make sure that your programs are articulated in the corporate planning documents because you know what, again, depending on which council you come from and how they approach it, um, you may get locked out of it and they, they might not even mean to lock you out of it but they might not have the resources, it might be, they might be feel that they're under pressure for time. Again, yes, it's no excuse but at the end of the time you guys have to like put your hand up, be proactive, say, look, I've got this ageing strategy or we need to do a needs analysis, get me involved in this process and, you know, fingers crossed you actually give more value to what you do and you'll be more recognised when it comes to having those really uh, dirty conversations about <coughs> money and the rest of it when you get to, to uh, budget cycles. Um, 
please talk to your colleagues and look at best practice. I did talk to you about community engagement activities and again, it's a separate conversation, but I'm more than happy to share some best practice examples with you if you want to give me a call. Um, again, just use the IPNR model and if you can have the, the conversation internally, holistically, within the, con within the organisation, try and get them to be having that conversation from a cross-divisional and issue point of view, not just target <coughs> group specific or service delivery specific. And whenever you actually apply for a grant, and this would include the, uh, the age-friendly community grants, see where it fits within the community aspirations of your community strategic plan because when we assess those grants, we will look at your community strategic plans. So make sure there's a connection. It's probably not that difficult to do. I'm sure that most of you are actually already looking at your community <coughs> strategic plans. Make that connection and um, good luck with the, with the grants as well. Um, and if anybody wants to have a chat, um, please take down my details. Um, more than happy to come and talk to you about not only the grants, but probably more importantly, integrated planning and reporting. Um, I'm based in Sydney. My, uh, the, the girl that I'm uh, stepping in for at the moment was based in Nara, so I'm actually quite accessible to a lot of the councils in Sydney. Having said that, I'm um, more than happy to travel out and have a conversation with some of the regional areas if you need presentations done with any of your councillors, for example, just to have a little bit of chat about integrated planning, more than happy to help out. Thank you.